So vlog update, let's tell you what's been going on in the month of March as we are officially in April. It's been a whirlwind, I don't even know. <laughs> want to say like living in an unpacked house like we're like mostly there but if you saw behind the camera like holy moly it's a disaster uh this is my zoom background slash bookshelves staging area slash desk and that's the only part you guys get to see but uh, living with a puppy she's now almost 16 weeks old and it's a mess i don't even know guys like living with a puppy is a mess but it's fun and she's so much like love and cuteness it's just that plus homeschooling plus business is picking up a lot and then i think a big thing too we're going through this trend, kind of transition where we're switching video editors again and podcast editors and so i feel like there's so many loose ends in the month of march that all i want to do for april is tie it up with a bow and get back to business i hate that kind of in between phase of business and life where like just things are floating everything's kind of like up here and i just want it on the ground feeling solid, feeling grounded so that we can start to move the needle forward. And I know even though things are up here right now, they are moving forward. It just doesn't feel that way. But as a very impatient, like go getter, that's a flaw that I have is I'm just like, just hurry up already. Like, I just want to like get back to normal schedule and like get a routine, but we're not there. We're definitely not there in this season. So what can I tell you about March? We had spring break, which I ambitiously decided to have Roman's birthday party that week and had two sleepovers and volunteered to take three nine-year-olds to Kid City. So it was a lot of fun and I really did try to have downtime that week, but I'll also say I was exhausted. <laughs> Just having the kids home and like having Roman's friends over all the time too and being the hostess with the mostest was tiring. What else can I tell you? Farm life update. We had the three chicks that we raised to be older. They had made it to two months old. We transitioned them out to the coop, netted it, thought it was great. Didn't realize they could jump four feet high and fly out of chain link fence. So we lost two of them within two days, like one a day. And then finally by the third day, we're like, we're taking the third one out. I don't know what's happening. They keep escaping. So we need to go back in and reinforce all of it with like bird netting on, on top of the chain link, on top of the, the hard wire. So make it like escape proof. At first we thought it was a mongoose coming in to steal them. Then we thought it was a cat, but there's no way. Like we, we mong, we, we proved it, I don't know. So I have to go back. So we're down to one of the older chicks. And then in the meantime, in the last week, we've gotten 10 more baby chicks. And you might be wondering, Marina, how are you getting all these chicks? Like what is happening? Um, we just have a lot of wild chickens, I'll say, in Waianae. And so Roman and my mother-in-law just keep catching them. Like literally one day old hatchlings, they'll be like 12 following a mom and then they'll just scoop them up. And the mom doesn't attack or anything. She just runs off with the rest of them. And then one by one by one, before you know it, now we have 11 chicks. So they're all out in the garage right now. They're super cute and fluffy. We'll put some B-roll over it so you can see them. But kind of starting over on the chicken journey. And it's been a little frustrating because I was so ready to like have grown up chicks go in the coop that we built and like in this pen, they're back to baby chicks with the light and all that stuff. So we're getting there, but we're learning as we go. I'll say that chickens is a new, thing for us. Garden wise, we have been completely like cleaning up a lot of things. So a lot of the trees were overgrown. So we've pruned everything. Every free second that we get is spent out in the garden, just decluttering and organizing and trying to make space. I did plant my herb garden, my flower starters, and then I keep doing like my lettuces and my kale, but the bugs and the chickens keep getting to it. So I have to restart those. So again, my impatience factor is like, I just want to see the flowers already. I just want to get the vegetables. And like, in reality, it takes four to six weeks for something to be like out of seed into something that can be transferred into the soil. And after that, it takes another month or two to actually produce a harvest or more. March is a month of hurry up and wait. And I think that's where I'm like in this internal wrestling of like, I don't like this feeling. I don't like that it's just like not doing what I want it to do. But on the plus side, we have been moving the needle on the nonprofit. LLC has been filed. We got the business registration approved with the name. Lulay Valley Farms is official. We are having our inaugural meeting next week with our board members. And then we are gonna be seeking an executive board after this. So I guess this is kind of like a call out to anybody if you're interested in partnering with us or working with us, or you have a skill set and assets that would bring something like this nonprofit, which is educational based on the food scarcity issue that we have in Hawaii and getting the next generation involved in where their food comes from and growing it from home. I need you because I cannot do it by myself. But also I don't just want our family to be running the whole thing. I need outside talent to come in and shed light 
bring your networks, bring your connections, bring your skill set so that this can really be a truly impactful organization. That's going to be this next phase. And so I've already started to try to like plant seeds and reach out and reconnect with some of my farm connections. There's so much good stuff happening. And when I tell you that there is a movement back to land, back to taking care of our families from what we grow, I'm serious. It's like, and it's not just me because these are like people that are not farmer people. They're like in the business world buying land. They're in town starting their homesteading. Like they're moving out of town to do this and it's people you wouldn't necessarily expect. So that's what gets me excited too. It's like we're on to something. I think it's just going to continue to grow in popularity. And one of the things I'm most excited about with this nonprofit is like really empowering people to grow their own food at home. You don't need an acre. You don't even need a half an acre. You just need some planter boxes and you can make a bounty of produce within those planter boxes. They can be on Linen Alive, they can be on the ground, they can be in the dirt. You don't need the planter box, just put it in the freaking dirt. Get a drip hose and you're good or hand water it. And there's just so many, so many benefits to doing that that we'll go into. Another fun thing I have planned this month for the month of April because it's Earth Day and Earth Week and all of that stuff is I'm actually gonna go present at my daughter's preschool and we're gonna do a little Earth Day presentation for the kids, which will be fun. So I'm gonna have Roman come as my assistant and he's gonna wear his beekeeping suit and talk about beekeeping equipment. And then I'll come in and do a presentation about where our food comes from. Um, I wanna bring a bunch of fruits and vegetables and kind of Q and A with the preschool schoolers of like an apple, right? We wouldn't have this apple unless it was pollinated by a bee or a cucumber or a squash or all the other fruits and vegetables that we know and love. Like I just want that connection made and make it really fun. And then we'll do a honey tasting too and just little stuff like that. So for now, it's just more of a, a practice run for me. I obviously don't have to have this huge presentation since it's preschool, but also to show proof of concept that this is something that schools would be interested in. Hopefully we could get funding for to help us run these programs in schools and have other people teach it, not just me. Like I said, I need skill set and the talent that's out there guys on the YouTube universe to reach out to me if this is something that's a calling on your heart because I cannot do it all alone. So I think that's kind of where we're going with the future is like let's experiment here and there, show proof of concept, and then how can we turn this into a real program for the state? But yeah, as far as business goes, real estate wise, it is picking up for sure. I think I have four buyers in escrow and all of them are getting credits negotiated, which is amazing, closing costs covered. So it's still very much doable. And then on the listing side, they're selling. That's all I have to say. I have two in escrow right now and then two more coming up this week. One is going live today. So by the time you guys watch this, it'll be live, but beautifully remodeled top to bottom. The other one's a condo in town that has a ton of great amenities. And so I'm also having conversations with clients who bought just two years ago, so very fresh. And they're having to move now because the military has changed their orders ahead of time. They didn't anticipate moving this soon, but they are. So we are having a number of conversations about people who are underwater, meaning they owe more than what they could sell it for today. Because a lot of these clients use the VA loan, so they could do a zero down loan, and you have that 3% funding fee for your first time VA use. And so your loan value is actually more than the purchase price for that first time. So you have to have appreciation higher than what that loan amount is, plus difference paid off on like whatever you paid down on it to make a profit because there's cost to selling, right? So typically you have closing costs of one to 2%, you have commission that's negotiable and you just wanna make sure that you can get out of it scot-free. But for these clients, now we have to look at, well, could you rent it? And rental is a lot lower than mortgages right now. So they'd be in the negative or are you willing to pay to sell? having that tough conversation of this is what it would take for you to get out today. Fortunately, it's going to cost you anywhere from 20 to 50,000 to get out of this if you had to sell it. So how bad do you need to sell it? You know, or can you have some temporary pain for a year or two, rent it out, make the profit down the line once it has more time to appreciate. So those are the kind of conversations that we're having with clients. It's been really insightful, but also just tough calls. You know, those aren't fun calls to say, look, it's not a good time to sell yet. It's too soon. But that's my job is just to advise you guys and say, this is the real, real. Like, I'm not going to fluff it up and make it sound like some nice thing or that it's a great idea to sell because it's not always a good idea to sell. So lots of advising, lots of referrals to property managers. And just as a reminder, guys, like I can help assist and connect you guys on the rental side too, even though I can't legally do your property management. We have great referral connections and so forth. So I think that kind of wraps up today's vlog. It's kind of a rant and a rage and we'll add a lot of B-roll to this so you can see kind of behind the scenes of what's happening on the farm. Yeah, I'm excited for the month ahead and just 
seeing the ball rolling. So keep your eyes and ears peeled. We will be sharing some updates as we go. You might start to see a look and a feel change a little bit as we tighten up who the Marina Tolentino brand is and who is it for. I just want to get really dialed in on the marketing. My website's going to get updated just with like clear call to actions. I've been doing a lot of research on email marketing and SEO stuff. And the truth is, is social media is not where it's at. It's where it's the most flashy, but it's not where the conversion happened. It's not where people actually discover you either. It's SEO. So I'm going to get nerdy, gir nerdy gertie on it and we'll kind of see what happens. So have a good weekend, guys, and I will see you soon.